How's it going, peeps? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we take a look at the next big bad coming to the MCU. If you're new to the channel, we cover the backstories of comic book characters, especially those coming to or rumored to be coming to live action. So hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of your favorite comic book characters' backstories. Now, usually it's my goal to give you the character's backstory in under five minutes, but Kang is a complicated figure and that might be a little hard to do. His story is not a straightforward linear story. He has been all over time and created many divergent timelines. It can get a little confusing. I'm gonna try and do my best to simplify it. So now let's take a look and find out who is Kang the Conqueror. Kang's true name is Nathaniel Richards. He has gone by various monikers, Rama Tut, the Scarlet Centurion, Iron Lad, and Immortus. Richards was born on Earth 6311 in the 31st century. At the age of 25, he found the Benefactor's former citadel, which contained part of a time machine and the plans for its operation. Richards finished it, incorporating some of his own designs. He traveled back to ancient Egypt with the plans to base himself in ancient Egypt and loot various time periods for advanced weapons and technology. He enclosed his time machine inside of a Sphinx idol to take advantage of the Egyptians' religious beliefs. He arrived in Egypt in 2950 BC. His machine malfunctioned, leaving him stranded there. He ruled there as the pharaoh Rama Tut for 10 years. He was pushed out of Egypt after losing battles to En Sabanur, who would later be known as Apocalypse, and a displaced time-traveling Fantastic Four. His machine had been repaired and he headed to the future, but ran into a time storm, forcing him into the 20th century. There, he rescued Dr. Doom, who was lost in space. After this encounter, he headed back to his own time period, but temporal disruptions sent him to Earth in the 40th century, which was a bleak world decimated by global wars. He took on the name Kang the Conqueror and gathered a barbarian army. He conquered the entire planet except for the small kingdom of Corellius because he was smitten by the king's daughter, Ravana. Kang had conquered everything within a hundred light years of Earth. He set his sights on the 20th century, but was defeated by the Avengers. Kang fled back to 1901 and took on the alias of Victor Timely in Wisconsin and founded the city of Timely. There, he built a portal to his base, Chronopolis. Still upset about his loss to the Avengers, Kang sent a Spider-Man robot, Time Spinner, to eliminate the Avengers. It was taken out by the real Spider-Man. He returned to the 40th century. To impress Ravana and win her over, he brought the Avengers forward in time to defeat them in front of Ravana. After being defied by both, Kang conquered the small kingdom. He tried to force Ravana to marry him, which led to his general, Baltog, and his men turning on Kang for not following his own rule, of killing conquered rulers. Kang allied with the Avengers to defeat them. Ravana was impressed by him risking his life for her and decided she loved him and jumped in front of a blast, saving Kang. Kang placed his love Ravana in a stasis chamber and vowed to restore her. Later, the Grand Master appeared and challenged Kang to a contest, offering him the power to life or death if he won. Kang won, but chose the power of death to kill the Avengers rather than life to restore Ravana. The Black Knight was able to resist his powers because he was not part of the Avengers. The Grand Master took Ravana from the chamber and replaced it with a fake. He told Ravana of Kang's betrayal. Kang then tried to have the Hulk kill Banner's ancestor to keep the Avengers from ever forming, but the plot was foiled by the Hulk. Kang, still heartbroken, gathered Ravanas from many timelines, but none lived up to his Ravana. Kang then went after the Celestial Madonna, a woman fated to give birth to the most powerful being in the universe. Of course, he wanted to be the father. He narrowed down the Madonna's identity to three women, Agatha Harkness, Mantis, and the Scarlet Witch. Ramatut, a future version of Kang, helped the Avengers 
foil Kang's plans. Kang, unable to get Mantis, tried to kill her, but the swordsman took the blast for her and died. Kang and Ramatut were pulled into limbo by a mortis, a future version of both men. Kang was able to imprison a mortis and used his technology to create a legion of unliving. The Avengers were able to defeat the legion. Now, I haven't explained it in the video, but every time Kang jumps, he creates a divergent timeline with a divergent, or as they call it in Loki, a variant of himself. So he jumped around three times at close to the same point in time, creating three variants to keep the Avengers busy while he again tried to take Mantis. Immortus outmaneuvered him and replaced Mantis with an imposter. Kang then fled to Tombstone, Arizona in the year 1873. He was defeated by some cowboy heroes and in particular, a time-traveling Thor who ended up disintegrating Kang. His consciousness was transported to another body. After a few more adventures, Kang ended up on Battleworld. Acting on the suspicion that Doom would betray the villains, Kang blasted him. Doom survived and then had Kang incinerated. At one point, Dr. Doom had gained the powers of the Beyonder and he restored Kang. Kang returned to the 40th century only to find his base ravaged. While seeking a growing man, he encountered Thor who banished him to Limbo, where the future version of himself Immortus operated from. He found a screen showing the time which Ravana was blasted. Kang grabbed the controls, causing a divergence in where Ravana was brought to his location and his variant was killed by the blast. Kang then realized that there was an enormous amount of variants of himself, so he hatched a plan to eliminate them all. He formed the Council of Kangs, allying with the strongest variants, and they began erasing the rest of the Kangs from alternate reality. Once they had eliminated them all, the Prime Kang killed the rest of the Council. This was all manipulated by Immortus behind the scenes to get rid of all the variants. Immortus then appeared and explained that he was Kang's future self. He showed Kang a globe that held the memories of all variant Kangs. Kang grabbed the globe and went crazy as all the memories of every Kang entered him. He created a divergent of himself to split the madness between two. One version headed to Chronopolis and the other ended up a member of the Cross Time Kangs. The Cross Time Kangs were a group of beings that had killed off versions of Kang and taken on the Kang identity. This Kang later died due to the actions of Kang Nebula, who turned out to be none other than Ravana. Prime Kang eventually took over the Cross Time Kangs and found an assassin was after him. He exposed the assassin. It was Ravana, now calling herself Terminatrix. The Avengers showed up, and this time, Kang shielded Terminatrix from Thor's hammer and sacrificed himself for her. She impersonated Kang and ruled for him until she resurrected him when the entity, Alioth, was freed. With the help of the Avengers, they were able to imprison the entity again. Kang and Ravana got past their differences and were finally together. They ruled together until Kang tired of administrative matters and longed for the days when he was worshipped. He returned to Egypt in 2930 as Rama Tut and destroyed his time machine. He was set on never becoming a mortis, but was unable to break the cycle. Kang, unwilling to become a pawn of the timekeepers, used Alioth to ravage the time variant's authority. He formed an alliance with the Avengers and the Kree Supreme Intelligence against Immortus and the Timekeepers. Immortus ended up destroying Chronopolis, and Ravana was apparently killed in the attack. The Timekeepers tried to force Kang to evolve into Immortus. He resisted by sheer will. Kang then destroyed the Timekeepers. Kang, now 75, with his future undetermined, wanted a successor. He created a group of Marcuses, and none of them ended up gaining his approval. He then decided to head back into his own past, saving himself before he was attacked and stabbed by a bully. He gifted himself a neurokinetic armor and showed his younger self his future. Young Nathaniel was repulsed by his future and escaped Kang to the 20th century to recruit the Avengers to help him defeat Kang. The Avengers had been disbanded, so going by the name Iron Lad, he founded and gathered together the young Avengers. Iron Lad seemingly killed Kang and then returned to his timeline to fulfill his destiny to restore the damaged timeline. Iron Lad's armor retained his brain patterns, memories, and emotions and joined the young Avengers as the new vision. So what do you think about the convoluted history of Kang? I hope I was able to simplify it enough and I didn't lose you.
So, do you think enough things changed, or is Kang just destined to become Kang? Well, as always, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to stop by the channel and check out my videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you again real soon. I'm out. Peace.